What is ISO 13485? Hello, I'm Terry McCann. All ISO standards, such as ISO 9001, 13485, and 14001, have been published by the International Organization for Standards, or ISO. In a nutshell, ISO 13485 specifies standards and requirements for a quality management system that can be used by any organization that has anything to do with the design, manufacture, provision or support of a medical device in any of the stages of its life cycle. By certifying an organization as conforming to the ISO 13485 standard, an accredited third party body of auditors attests to the organization conforming to the quality management requirements of the standard, including being compliant with applicable regulatory requirements, which must be identified within the quality management system or QMS. If you are not sure what a quality management system is, please have a look at my video, What is a Quality Management System? If you are in any way familiar with ISO 9001, you will see that there is a lot of overlap across these two standards. The dot 2016 or colon 2016 refers to the year that the revised standard is published. In ISO standards, the various numbered sections are referred to as clauses. After some introduction and definitions, the actual requirements of the ISO 13485-2016 standard are contained in clauses 4 to 8. Clause 4 is an introductory section describing some general requirements, starting with the need to have an effective quality management system or QMS that meets regulatory requirements for the type of medical device and the requirements of the ISO 13485 standard itself. You have to identify the processes that make up the QMS and show how they are interconnected and controlled using a risk-based approach. You have to document your QMS or references to it in a quality manual. Each medical device type or family must be documented in a medical device file. You have to keep records where appropriate and all relevant documentation and records must be controlled according to a documented procedure. The first requirement in Clause 5 is for top management to show its commitment to establishing and maintaining an effective quality management system. This means establishing a quality policy and setting quality objectives for the whole organization. Top management have to define and document responsibilities and authorities for effectively operating the organization in conformity with its QMS, including to appoint a management representative who, among other things, shall report on the effectiveness of the QMS at management reviews conducted at planned intervals. Clause 6 sets out the requirement to provide the resources necessary for an effective QMS. You have to identify the people and the jobs affecting product quality and ensure that these people are competent. You have to provide the infrastructure and the work environment needed to ensure medical device safety and performance, such as health, cleanliness and clothing requirements, where these could affect product quality. Where applicable, you have to establish arrangements to prevent contamination if you have products needing this kind of control. Clause 7 contains a very large set of requirements covering the whole of operations, starting with having to plan and develop the processes needed for product realization. Thus, you have to set product quality objectives, identify product realization requirements, and establish arrangements for communicating with customers and medical device regulators. You also have to establish design and development procedures and organize design and development activities. 
effective verification and validation is a very important requirement at this stage prior to design transfer to manufacturing. Then you have to document procedures to control purchasing, such as to control the selection of suppliers, to monitor supplier performance, to plan product purchases, and to verify that purchased products conform to specifications. Clause 7 also requires that you plan, monitor, and control production and service provision, define requirements for contamination control if that is applicable in manufacturing and storage, and document product installation and verification requirements. Finally, you have to develop servicing procedures and reference materials, validate processes used for production and service provision where inspection is not feasible, and facilitate product identification and traceability, which may be vital in recalls. And so on to Clause 8, Measurement, Analysis and Improvement. Firstly, you have to plan how your organization will monitor, measure and analyze processes to ensure product and QMS conformity and QMS effectiveness. You also have to establish methods to obtain and monitor customer feedback and processes to investigate complaints, review risk, take action and report results, including to regulatory authorities where appropriate. The organization has to plan and conduct internal audits to determine whether the QMS is in conformity and processes are achieving planned results. You have to monitor and measure product during the manufacturing process to identify non-conforming product and take appropriate action to isolate such product and prevent unintended delivery or use. Finally, you are required to analyze data about your organization's QMS in order to evaluate its suitability and effectiveness and improve where indicated. Where appropriate, you need to take corrective and preventive action in order to maintain QMS suitability, adequacy and effectiveness and ensure medical device safety and performance. I'm Terry McCann. My company is TCMC Quality Management Services. If you have any questions about ISO 13485 or concerns about transition to ISO 13485 2016, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment or go to the Contact Us page on my website or send an email to terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca